So we're now going to look at secure video streaming uh, from uh, an Amazon S3 bucket, but we're going to pair this with CloudFront to allow us to deliver this a little bit more efficiently. And what this means is instead of accessing a uh, URL for a particular file from our S3 bucket directly, what we're going to do is we're going to use CloudFront and this is going to act as a content delivery for the contents inside of that bucket. So as well as creating a new bucket, we're going to need to actually set this up and, and add some more code to our start file to actually be able to serve this properly. Now you can see that I've set up a new bucket here. So if you are following along, you're going to need to create a new bucket altogether where well, you don't have to, but in this case, we'll keep everything nice and separate. And I've called this video.website.com and I've uploaded quite a large file here that I want to, a user to be able to stream on my website. So we've got this file in here that exists and also note that it's actually at the moment a private file. So we can't access this file uh, normally by just using the URL. And that's entirely up to you whether you actually want to do that. It, it doesn't really matter. But in our case, we're going to tokenize it. And that's so users can't find the video URL and give it to someone else. Again, if you're using some kind of membership behind your website, this is going to be really useful. So the first thing that we need to do then is under your services section, you'll find uh, the CloudFront link. When you go ahead and click that, you'll come into CloudFront distributions and you can set up a new distribution. So remember, we're access accessing this through our CloudFront distribution, not directly on our bucket. So what we want to do then is generate a key pair for our CloudFront distribution. So over under our um, security credential area, you can find that by just by clicking your name in the top here. We're gonna generate a CloudFront key pair. And I have a few here that I've created that I've actually deleted. So let's go ahead and create a new key pair. So what we can do here is we can download the private key file, which is exactly what we need to be able to connect up with CloudFront. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and that's going to download that file for me just down here, you can see. And you're going to need to store this inside of the uh, application that you're working with. Now remember, do not store it in a publicly accessible location. This is much better stored outside of the public directory that you're working in. So just remember to save it in a location that makes sense so users cannot access your private key or they're potentially then going to be able to access your CloudFront distribution. That's really, really important. So I'm going to head, go ahead and quickly save this over in my uh, directory here. Again, store it somewhere completely outside of anywhere that it can be publicly accessible. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly copy this over now. OK, so I've stored that inside of the root directory of my application, which isn't a good idea. Like I said, store it somewhere secure uh, outside of the public uh, access. But we can now use this to actually connect to CloudFront. But we don't have a CloudFront distribution set up. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create Distribution. Under Web, I'm going to click Get Started. And the origin domain name is basically going to be the domain name of the bucket that you want to serve content from. So in this case, it's going to be video.website.com.s3.amazonaws.com. And I'm going to keep the origin ID exactly the same. So we are eventually going to restrict bucket access, but I'm not going to enable this just now. I'm going to do that in a moment because what I need to do is actually set up an origin access identity in, a, in order to do this and tie it in with this, uh, this CloudFront distribution. So there's a few options that we have here. Most of these are uh, can sort of be left normal uh, or as they are. Um, we can do things like um, customize the time to live on the files within that bucket. Um, but we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to be testing how they're served in just a moment. Um, there's a few other options if you do need to change anything. But all the way down here, I'm going to hit Create Distribution. Now, this is going to say uh, in progress for quite a while. So what you're going to want to do is just leave that to finish. And once that is finished, we can carry on. OK, so now that this is deployed, we can go ahead and set up an origin access identity. So if we click Create Origin Access uh, Identity, we can just hit Create on that. And we can add a name. So I guess let's just edit this. And uh, we'll say video.website.com and hit Yes, Edit. OK, so now that we've got this then, 
we can tie this up to the uh, distribution that we created earlier. So let's edit this one, uh, hit distribution settings. So if we go over to origins, we select this origin that's been created and edit this. We want to restrict the bucket access. So if we click yes here, we can either create a new identity or we can use an existing identity. Remember, we've already set that up just a second ago, so we can choose that one. And what we want to do is grant read permissions on the bucket. We want to update the bucket policy automatically, and we'll see what this entails in just a moment. So I'm going to hit yes, edit, and that's gone ahead and uh, added that origin access identity to there. Now, if we head over to our bucket and just give the page a refresh, we can uh, click on video.website.com. We can head over to properties and we can look under the permissions once it's loaded. Uh, if we go under permissions here, you can see it says edit bucket policy. Now, normally this would say add bucket policy, but this has been generated for us already. Now, what we also want to do is we want to restrict access to this by signed URLs only, which is with the tokenization. So under the behaviors area, we want to edit this default behavior here. And uh, we saw this when we set up our distribution, but what we want to do now is restrict viewer access and use signed URLs. So if we hit yes here, um, we can choose the trusted signers. So we can either use, uh, well, we can either specify accounts or use self. In this case, I'm gonna use self, which is the current account that I'm using. And let's go ahead and edit that. And that is pretty much all done. So all we need now is the domain name that's um, tied down to this distribution. And we can copy this. So when we go ahead and update everything inside of our app, we can use this. So remember, we have our private key stored just here. All we need to do now is actually change a few things inside of start.php. So if we just open that up, we're going to um, use the SDK to access CloudFront. So I'm going to create a CloudFront uh, variable here, and this is CloudFront client. And again, we're using a factory here, and we need to pass options in, much like we did for the S3 client. So we need to specify where the private key is. So we say private key. That's going to be the location of the private key that you downloaded earlier and stored. And then we need the key pair ID. Okay, so the private key then is this file just here. So what we can do is just grab the whole name of this. And this would obviously be uh, to a path outside of the directory that you're currently working in. So the key pair ID you can find over on your security credentials area where you set up your um, CloudFront key pairs. So this is the access key ID. If we just paste that in there, this should be all good to go now to actually access uh, CloudFront from here. So over on video.php, we obviously want to tokenize this URL, um, but we need to supply a few settings in our CloudFront config. So over here, I'm going to create a new key called CloudFront. And this is going to be an array with the URL to my CloudFront distribution. Okay, so remember that's over inside of here. If we just copy this, and paste this in here, we need to append on HTTPS. And that's now the URL we're going to use to access our bucket content. So what we need to do now then is over in video, we need to define the object that we're accessing. Again, this could come from a database or something like that. In this case, it's called purecsstabs.mp4. We need to set an expiry on this URL. Remember, we're tokenizing it or using a signed URL. In this case, we're going to use uh, PHP's date time functionality to provide, say, 10 minutes of, of access time for this. Remember, if your users are streaming a video and you, act, and you maybe provide one minute, for example, then that might be a problem because if it's a 10 minute video and they pause it, what they're going to have to do then is make another request to the server to pick up where they left off or if they were skipping through the video for more than a minute, uh, this would fail for them. So make sure it's a sufficient amount of time. So for the URL then, we're going to use the CloudFront um, variable that we created. We're gonna say get signed URL. And this takes an array in here that allows us to provide the URL that we're accessing. In this case, it's going to be the URL name, which I'll call X, and the object name, which I'll call Y. 
So we can replace this in. We know that the URL we've just stored in our config. So that's under CloudFront URL. And Y is obviously our object, which we have just stored at the top of that file. And now we need to provide when it expires. And that's pretty straightforward. It's just the expiry that we stored up there. But we want to call the getTimestamp method from our dateTime object to get a timestamp rather than the actual object itself, because that's not going to work. So let's just echo out URL and see what we get here. Make sure we didn't do anything wrong. So let's refresh. Ah, and of course, so this is namespaced. So under start, where we created this uh, or we used this um, class here, we actually need to provide a import for this because it's namespaced. So it's under AWS CloudFront and it's CloudFront client. So when we refresh now, we get this long URL here, which if we just paste into here, we get an access denied error. So let's just check we've set everything up right. Um, under our origins, let's go ahead and re-update our bucket policy because remember we changed the um, origin access identity to use the self account. So that should have gone and updated that. We can check that uh, by just giving this a refresh, returning back to all of our buckets. So if we just edit this bucket policy, you can see that the uh, this is now changed and it's allowing access through that origin access identity there. So what we can now actually do is retest this URL. So if we just refresh and paste this into here, you can see that that's actually allowing me now to download that file. So we don't want to download it. We want to use it inside of a video. So let's go ahead and do this now. So over in our uh, video.php file, let's end this off and create a document. And let's go ahead and just say video and we'll create a, an HTML5 video tag. We're not going to embed the source just in here. We are going to allow controls. And in here, we're going to define the source where it's coming from. And we're also going to define the type as well. In this case, it's video MP4. You might have lots of different files. Um, oops, sorry, source, that should be. You might have lots of different files, different types that's supported on different browsers. In this case, I'm just using MP4. And immediately in here, we're just going to echo out that URL. So that will now play inside of the video player. Um, I'm going to get rid of this echo URL as well as we don't really need that. So now when I refresh, you can see that that loads in the video. Let's in fact give this a width of 768 just temporarily. So it looks a, bit, a little bit smaller. And there, there is the file being loaded. So if we inspect this page, then we can actually see the content being loaded in. And what's happening is if we go onto the network tab here, let's turn the console off. Uh, we can actually see that the content's coming through as partial content because we're currently streaming it. And when we click to access different areas of the video, you can see that each request is being canceled and a new um, request is being sent to that part of the video. That's why the expiry is really important here because you don't want this to expire. Otherwise, what's going to happen is as your users are uh, scanning through here, um, this is going to be an expired request. So for example, if we were to change this to 10 seconds and we refresh, it's going to work fine here. We can hit play and we can watch this through. However, when we try and scan across, eventually after them 10 seconds are up, you can see we get a forbidden request here. So make sure that this is enough for your uh, users to watch the video. I guess it really depends on, on how you want to set this, but just tweak it. Otherwise, we're going to see a failure here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check if this is actually being served through CloudFront or not. When I click this request, you can see that we get the uh, tabs here that we can usually na navigate through. But under the headers, if we uh, come down, we can see this X cache header here. And this has been missed from CloudFront. So this hasn't been served from CloudFront. If you refresh a couple of times, uh, you'll eventually see a hit from CloudFront, which means it's being served via CloudFront and not being requested from the origin. And remember, the origin is your S3 bucket. So um, in my case at the moment, I'm not seeing any hits from CloudFront. Sometimes this does take a while for it to um, 
actually uh, hit CloudFront. Uh, it depends on uh, when it's been stored, but you can set additional options. Uh, for example, if we head over to our origin just here, you can actually, oops, sorry, no, our behaviors, you can actually see, you can give this a customized caching time, a, a, a minimum time to live. And you can obviously read more about that by clicking the I just here. So what we've basically done in this video is we've set up CloudFront to fetch from an origin. And remember that origin is our Amazon S3 bucket. And it's pulling this down now from that URL that we requested. Um, and it's serving it via CloudFront from our S3 bucket. Now I've just taken a moment to do a couple of refreshes and you can see that we're actually now getting hit from CloudFront. So that's being immediately loaded in uh, via the content delivery rather than being fetched from the origin. Um, and there's a lot more tweaking that you can actually do with CloudFront to actually better serve files. But this has been a very basic introduction of how you can serve uh, videos and stream videos from S3 using CloudFront.